Hi, boys and girls. I am so excited to be your mystery reader tonight. It's Mrs. Lucido from first grade. I hope everybody is wearing their pajamas and you are all cuddled up and ready to hear a great story. I have my friend Pug here, of course. Pug is going to read with us tonight. We are continuing our great story of Apple Blossom the Possum. And tonight we are going to start with chapter 14. Let's begin on page 98. Let's begin. It is late when Apple Blossom opens her eyes the next night. She has slept in. Amlet is cleaning his whiskers and Antonio is grooming his ears. She hopes that they have forgotten about the harsh words of the night before and she tries to sound cheerful when she says, oh, I hear the wind. That means fallen berries on the ground. Antonio shoots a look to Amlet and then gets right to the point. Amlet and I were talking while you were asleep. We don't want you spending time around people. Apple Blossom tries not to sound angry. I'm glad that you're worried about me, but you don't need to be. Antonio stops cleaning his ears and sighs. <sighs> we do when you exercise poor judgment Amlet looks confused. What does exercising have to do about this? Antonio pulls on Amlet's tail. It brings him back into line and he tells his sister, what we're saying is important. You need to listen. Why does it feel like you're ganging up on me? She answers. Antonio's voice is firm. We're looking out for you. That's different. Apple Blossom crosses her arms and holds them against her chest. You're not the boss of me. Amlet snorts through his nose. It sounds mean. Don't laugh at me, Amlet. He turns his deep chuckle into a cough. I wasn't. I was clearing my throat of a hairball. I've been grooming. Apple Blossom flattens her ears low to her skull. Likely story. With that, she squeezes past the two possums and heads out into the dark as she says, I guess I understand why we're considered solitary animals. She hurries away from the wall, not giving them a chance to answer. She wants to get as far from Amlet and Antonio as she can. They don't understand her. Apple Blossom continues running, and she doesn't look over her shoulder, but if she did, she would see that her brothers are following her. And if her feelings weren't so hurt, she would hear their rapid footsteps. Instead, she mutters to herself, I don't care what they think. It doesn't take long for Apple Blossom to reach the monster's house. She sees that the red ball is resting in the grass and the house is dark. So she figures all of the monsters must be asleep. She heads for the ivory covered drain pipe that runs along the side of the house and she starts to climb. Apple Blossom's brothers huddle together as they watch her reach the top of the pipe and then disappear from view. Antonio shakes a fist in frustration. She didn't listen to a word we said. At his side, Amlet is equally upset. If she's trying to act like a rebel, she's succeeding. Rebels need to have causes, Antonio mutters. Amlet asks, adds, and she's never even liked acting. She wants to just be herself. Antonio looks up the drain pipe. Well, maybe this is the real apple blossom and the other apple blossom was just acting. He takes a moment to consider. That's the problem with being the actors of the animal world. How are we supposed to know what's genuine and what isn't? 
He takes hold of the vine that grips the drain pipe. We have no choice but to follow her. Amlet nods in agreement. No choice. With Amlet right behind him, Antonio works his way up the side of the house. He moves very quietly. When he reaches the roof, he peers over the lip of the gutter and sees his sister. She is sitting on the edge of the chimney, staring up at the stars. Into the pin drop quiet, Antonio calls out, What are you doing up there? His voice startles Apple Blossom. She is perched precariously on the edge of the chimney, and Antonio and Amlet can only watch helplessly as she jumps back, her feet finding nothing but air. They run to the brick smokestack, but it's too late. Apple Blossom has disappeared into the darkness. Antonio and Amlet stand for a long moment in total shock. And then they fall into each other's arms. What has happened is not the fault of the stars, but it might be the fault of the Possum Brothers. Now, let's move on to chapter 15 on page 105, 105. Are you ready? Apple Blossom opens her eyes. She is alive, but in a daze. Where is she? She tries hard to make the world stop spinning as she realizes ah, she is inside a monster house. The little possum's whole body freezes. What will become of her now? Will the large people attack? Will the dog rip her into pieces? Anything is possible. She waits for the assault to begin, but nothing happens. And then she realizes that the monsters are still asleep. Her tumble down the brick shaft into their lair has not disturbed the creatures. Apple Blossom's body is sore from the fall, but nothing is broken. She lifts her arms and tries to climb the sooty brick walls, but there is nothing to grip. No amount of effort will get her up the smooth side. Apple Blossom turns back to look inside the monster house. She can see all kinds of objects in the shadowy space. Soft looking nests where the people sit when they stare at their magic light box. It is now also asleep. She is afraid of that box and she wants to stay as far away as possible. And then she hears something. It's coming from above. Apple Blossom, are you okay down there? It's Antonio and Amlet. They are up on the roof, shouting down to her. Apple Blossom wants to answer, but she's afraid that if she makes noise, she will wake the people, or worse, the dog. Who knows what would happen then? She closes her eyes and forces herself not to panic. Isn't that what Mama Possum has said? Don't panic when you have stage fright. Well, where's Mama now? What would Mama Possum do in this situation? How should she act? They never rehearsed being trapped in a monster house. She decides to act brave and confident. Trying out a line, Apple Blossom whispers, If there's a way in, then there has to be a way out. She's not sure she means it, but she says it in a second time anyway, but with more feeling. And then she starts to move. She stays along the edge of the walls. It doesn't take long before she works her way around the largest space in the house. She finds no way out. Up ahead is another area she can see that this is where the people keep their food. 
They store more things than squirrels. It is possible that the light boxes are telling the monsters to be hoarders. It certainly looks that way. High above on ledges, she sees cartons that her nose tells her contain edible things. She spots apples in a bowl and they are not rotten. She sees bananas and they are yellow and full, not brown with empty skins. She smells coffee and chocolate and bread and crackers and nuts. And then her nose twitches as it detects something more overpowering than the smell of cinnamon and pepper and olive oil. She smells a dog. And then she sees him, but he's in a trap. There is a huge cage in the corner of this hoarding area. It is a square with a metal front and inside is the beast known as Columbo. His eyes are shut. He is asleep. This is a miracle. And then the worst possible thing happens. The monster's snout starts moving up and down. Something bad is about to happen. Apple Blossom can feel it. And the dog confirms her suspicion when he opens his eyes and stares right at her. Apple Blossom takes off running. In the trap, the dog gets to his feet and barks as loud as anything the possum has ever heard. The noise is angry and so frightening. But then a light goes on in another part of the house and Apple Blossom hears the sound of the people moving. And somehow that is even scarier than the villainous dog. Let's move on to chapter 16. Everyone should be on page 110, 110. Let's begin. Up on the roof, Antonio and Amlet are frantic. Something is going on in the house below. Little Apple Blossom must have survived the fall because there's a lot of commotion now. They hear the dog barking and part of the roof has lit up. The possums run to a smooth square where there is glass instead of tile. They stare down through this window on the roof. They can see people walk by right underneath them. And they can also see Apple Blossom. She is running. She turns the corner and disappears from view. A shiver goes up Amlet's spine. <gasps> what have we done? Antonio shuts his eyes and does his best to concentrate. When he opens them, he is set on a plan. We can't stay here. So is it every possum for himself? Amlet shouts. Antonio starts for the drain pipe. We'll come back when we have more to offer than our own limited knowledge of the situation. Amlet's head bobs up and down in agreement. And until then, we just hope that our little sister survives. Apple Blossom's timing is perfect. She turns the corner just before a large monster emerges. A second earlier and she would have certainly been seen. The people looks in both directions and then heads toward the, do the barking dog. What's going on, the people says. What's wrong with you, Columbo? One thing is very obvious. The dog named Columbo wants out of his trap. He is desperate to show what is wrong. His cage rattles and sways from the motion of his body. Apple Blossom hears the commotion and the communication between the monsters is not good. The people's voice is harsh. Calm down, you're waking up the whole house. 
the dog stops moving. Only his tail trembles as he tries to control himself. The people looks down the hallway and then says, Okay, all right, I'll make sure everything's okay. And with that, the monster turns in the direction of Apple Blossom. Apple Blossom, for a moment, just an instant, thinks she should act dead. But then she gathers her wits and she decides that if she pretends to die, given the circumstances, she might end up actually dead. Any performance right now might be her curtain call. And so she keeps moving. She turns left, she turns right, she spins around, she stays low to the ground, head tucked down. She tries to remember acting exercises, but not the dying part. Act brave. Act the part of an animal that knows how to escape danger. And then she turns another corner and she's in a new area. She is in the place where the smallest people lived. Up ahead, she sees a nest with the littlest monster inside. Next to the nest is a pile of furry animals. Their eyes are open wide, but they don't move. She knows right away these are not real animals. They have no smell. They are fake. They are stuffed cloth. The monster coming after her is getting closer. And so Apple Blossom dives into the pile of fake furry animals just before a beam of light sweeps into the room. Apple Blossom does not move. She does not breathe. She stares straight ahead and she waits. She acts like a stuffed fur animal. The monster without much fur on his head stands in the doorway. He holds a light in his hand. This is what makes the shining beam. This hot white light spins around the room and then it happens. The light sweeps right over Apple Blossom's face. She remembers Mama saying that an actor has to burn inside with outer ease. A famous possum, possum named Chekhov said this. Apple Blossom fixes her face in a smile. She acts fake. She acts frozen. She acts not afraid. She thinks this might be her best acting ever. The monster without much fur on his head stands in front of a second monster who has appeared. The second monster whispers something. Apple Blossom cannot hear. And then both people turn and move back down the passageway. Apple Blossom hears the monsters open the door to the house. Then she hears the monster say, ah -ha! Moments later, the house door can be heard closing Apple Blossom hears the biggest monster say, Good boy, Columbo. You heard possums up on that roof. That's what it was, right, boy? I saw them just now. There is something about the tone of the monster's voice that makes the dog get all wiggly. Apple Blossom can hear his tail thrashing against his cage. The monster continues speaking. Well, you get a treat for that. I saw two of the nasty critters. The word treat makes the beast go crazy. The word nasty makes Apple Blossom's heart sink. Apple Blossom can hear the monster opening something in the hoarding area. And then the dog known as Columbo snaps his jaws. She can make out the beast chewing. Then the people issues a command. Go back to sleep, Columbo. We'll call an exterminator tomorrow. The word hangs in the air, exterminator. What is an exterminator? 
Apple Blossom thinks it through. The monster has seen Antonio and Amlet, but they must be safe because he came right back inside. Besides, his teeth are no good for attacking. She has seen the teeth of the people. They have no points. They are flat and square and not the teeth for doing anything productive. The teeth, like their absence of tails, is another thing that must make people so unhappy. In the distance, she hears the dog named Columbo smack his lips and make a whining sound. He wants more treats. The treat seems to be all that he's thinking about now. She can tell that he has forgotten she's in the house because she hears the beast settle back down into his cage. He is going back to sleep. Apple Blossom breathes in and breathes out and congratulates herself. She wishes she could tell her brothers and her sisters, and most of all, Mama Possum, how she just made it past a dog and people. Her heart is pounding so hard that she can feel it in her toes, but she is suddenly more tired than she can remember ever being. There's no choice in the matter. She has to fall asleep. But should she hide? Apple Blossom unties a hat that is on some kind of large pretend people and places it on her own head. Maybe it will make her look as if she belongs. She's surprised by how comfortable the hat is. There's a fake bear wearing a blue garment and she pulls it off and slips it on. Her own arms fit right through the sleeves and she is able to close all of the buttons but one. She sees that another of these fake furry creatures has black covers on its feet. She grabs one and pulls and the funny object comes right off. It doesn't take long before she has her own toes inside both the foot covers. Her transformation is now complete. She snuggles into the pile of stuffed animals and exhaustion overtakes her. Moments later, she is sound asleep. Thank you for joining me this evening. I hope you had fun listening to those chapters. I wonder if Apple Blossom will sleep the whole night with those stuffed animals, how will she get out of her situation? How will she get free? We'll find out tomorrow. Have a great night. Good night.